Namaskar, greetings and salutations friends, and welcome back to more Warhammer 40k lore. Where today, we are going to have another look at a world of the Imperium. The humble, yet also utterly invaluable, Agri World. For no matter how mighty the army, it will wither and die on the vine without food. No matter how massive a forge world, no matter how many billions of bolters it can produce without food. But before all that, a word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. The cutting edge in dungeon delving strategy, boasting over 600 champions, all with unique skills and abilities. It is available now for both mobile and PC by using the QR code on screen or the link in the description below. And today I am going to give you some lore from one of the bosses in the game, a familiar face to any veteran, the Minotaur. Frequently used as a proverbial chew toy, the Minotaur is the guardian of the valuable scrolls resource, used to enhance your heroes with special masteries. As you may gather, he isn't too hard, though he can lay a smackdown in combination with his cursed power. But the cool part about this guy is his backstory. The Minotaur was not a bad dude at all. He was simply cursed with shapeshifting, which slowly turned him into more and more of a bloodthirsty beast every day, even as he desperately studied magic for years and years to find a cure to the curse, a way to counter it even. And he thought he had succeeded. Thought. As he continued his studies by day and ate the neighborhood residents alive at night. He eventually found out his own terrible secret and volunteered to be trapped inside an abandoned castle for all eternity, where he could continue his studies in the few moments of sanity left to him. And get raided repeatedly by people like me that come to steal his homework. <laughs> Listen, I do feel bad, but needs must when the devil drives. And speaking of drives, the raid team is forging ahead with Forge Pass Season 3, brand new champions and a legendary Death Knight champion. Plus, a brand spanking new skin for Madam Ceres, one of the best debuff champions in the game, and now finally looking the part as well. So do jump into Raid by scanning the QR code on screen or clicking the link in the description down below. And as a new player, you get almost $30 worth of free starter pack bonuses, a free champion and this awesome in-game loot. You will find all of this right up here in your inbox when you log into the game for the first time. And now on to the story of how the sausage is made. Or... Actually, let's begin with the simple fact that the sausage is merely one of a billion different products being made on a million different agri-worlds scattered all throughout the Imperium. Because, of course, grain and good old-fashioned food are not the only things that are being created on these agri-worlds. Modern-day society requires a tremendous quantity and variety of produce to remain stable and functional. Even if all you are producing is nutrient sludge for Mechanicus worker drones somewhere, you need calcium, you need fibers, you need magnesium, you need fats, you need countless minerals, you need potassium, sodium, chloride, phosphor. You need trace minerals, iron, copper, zinc, selenium, and magnesium, chromium. Hell, we haven't even started talking about all the various vitamins the body needs. So many different considerations. And of course, you can de facto starve a population for an extended period of time. Malnutrition is not instantaneously lethal, but it will wear down the body over time. Perhaps in the case of Mechanica's worker drones, this isn't a problem, as they are fed by endlessly recycling cloning vats, pumping out new chassis for servitors, or fed by tremendous penal colonies nearby, etc. etc. Like with all things in reality and 40k, there are exceptions to every rule. But the point I'm getting across here is that an agri-world isn't just endless fields of corn. 
for the simple reason that eating nothing but corn will kill your ass via malnutrition. The particular kind in this case is called pellagra. Symptoms will only manifest after you know, five to six months, and you'll only die after maybe five or so years, so it'll be a slow death, but it will be a certain one nevertheless, as corn does not contain enough of tryptophan, which is an essential amino acid without which, as the name essentially implies, you'll eventually keel over. It is therefore vitally important that either the agri world itself or the processing plants be they on orbiting space yards or ships or an entirely separate planet add in anything and everything required to well, allow the food to maintain human life. <laughs> and of course, simple survival is not always enough either. We humans tend to get a bit cranky after eating the same food for too long. Just imagine you yourself, for example, eating the exact same meal for a week. You'll start getting a bit um, peevish at the seventh day, aren't you? Hell, after the third day for most people. And beyond, you know, simple worker drones and servitors, the majority of the Imperium's population are not going to be happy just being pumped full of nutrient-rich gruel day in and day out. Obviously, if a population knows no different, if they aren't even aware that other food sources even exist, then sure, but, well, as the old saying goes, civilization is only ever three meals away from collapse. And this holds true even for a civilization as oppressive as the Imperium. A lack of variety in foodstuff is simply an invitation to civil disorder and disobedience, and will unquestionably so lead to a flourishing black market. Taking into consideration the multitude of other worries that the average imperial society has in terms of stability, well, frankly, providing some potatoes here and there in addition to the gruel is a relatively small price to pay for one less civil disturbance. Which therefore means in turn that most agri-worlds are not uni-productional. Most planets do not produce one singular crop continuously, in part because, well, it's going to be damn difficult to do that. Certain crops like certain climates, certain soil types, certain weather conditions, etc. Terraforming an entire planet, even if it could be done to produce nothing but corn, well, it would require a lot more energy and resources rather than simply growing corn over there and beets over here. Another compelling reason is because providing the bare minimum of foodstuff variety is an easy way to keep a populace quiescent, at least on that front. Furthermore, there are certain status of imperial society that just won't accept eating nothing but corn. You don't expect an upper spire noble to dine on cobs day in and day out, do you? That would be preposterous. And yet, where are they going to get it? If they are living on a high world whose entire surface is either irradiated, poisoned, or covered by enormous man-made steel mountains, <laughs> you know, setting up a garden is going to be a bit difficult. So they are going to need to import it. Now, in theory, the Adeptus Administratum could say, No, you don't get your potatoes, Mr. High Spire Noble. We've decided that everyone on your planet eats corn. This would, again, be theoretically within the Administratum's abilities to do. They're the ones that deal with the vast majority of the shipping, beyond local private enterprises. They're the ones who run most of the agri-worlds, to the point of outright owning some planets and turning them into official administratum agri-worlds. But the reason why they don't do it, the reason why they set aside fields for potato production and allow the import of these luxury goods in this example, is for the exact same reason that the average populace is provided wherever possible with the bare minimum amount of foodstuff variety. 
because if the noble doesn't get it, he's gonna get cranky. And cranky nobles can create a wide variety of mischief for the Imperium. And frankly, a couple dozen shipments of potatoes is a small price to pay for continued peace and stability. Of course, again, as always, there are exceptions. There are certain areas of the Imperium where, due to a variety of circumstances, food might simply be really goddamn tight, and planets might be focused for sheer production of whatever provides the greatest bang for your bucks. An agri world might be focused towards creating solely corn because it's the best thing they can, and therefore it'll be what's available. Even upper spire nobles, the elites, will have to rely on either illegal smuggling networks or civilian-owned transport capacity to provide them with whatever luxury they can pay exorbitant amounts of money to acquire. And that money can also be another reason for certain planets focusing near exclusively on certain export goods. There is an example of the world of Kalto. Kalto is an agri world that produces enormous quantities of something called Pandus rice. This is considered a delicacy amongst vast swaths of the Imperium, and therefore it is exported in tremendous quantities at tremendous profits. Not just to nearby worlds, but sent over ridiculous distances to affluent clients many, many, many light years away. There are many other such luxury goods that will be produced either as a side crop on some planets or as main produce on others. It's a bit of the idea again of the cash crop versus the food crop, something that has caused a great deal of problem in our world as well, where the question is, do you produce something that you can sell at a profit and then use that money to buy whatever food and sundries you need, or do you produce the food you require so that you can eat first and then sell the surplus? The Imperium has to deal with much the same problem, but on a much, much bigger scale. Again, this is one of the reasons why the Administratum tends to take a uh, very close interest to the produce levels of most agri-worlds, to the point of outright seizing and claiming several of them to make sure that the production are heading in the right direction. After all, whilst huge quantities of uh, sugar might be very useful, if there's no grain available, then uh, all of the sugary pastries in the world are going to fall woefully short of stopping all-out civil war on the nearby Hive World. And on the topic of Hive Worlds, because we've returned to that quite frequently here, obviously, because they are going to be one of the primary consumers of mass-produced agricultural goods. Many other planets with only partial population is going to be able to you know, feed itself. If you've got a world with a handful of major cities, or something roughly comparable to our own planets, for example, those worlds will be more than capable of feeding themselves. Many other worlds have intricate systems like domes, for example, that can produce the very least part of their agricultural needs, while some, like high worlds, are completely reliant upon external imports because they, beyond perhaps growing fungi or algae, etc., are producing next to no food of their own, certainly nowhere near subsistency levels. But, in some cases, entire sectors might be bereft of well, good planets for agriculture. Because growing shit is not necessarily all that easy. The overwhelming majority of planets out there are lifeless dead balls of rock or metals, iron, or with atmospheres so incredibly hostile that growing anything there is just... It's just not simply possible, or it's lacking some key ingredient like, well, water, for example. That one's difficult to get around, or arable soil, etc, etc, etc. Meaning that in some areas, particularly luckless areas of the galaxy, single agri-worlds might be required to feed 
dozens of other worlds, everything from minor mining outposts to supply stations to research stations to spying stations to entire planets to forge worlds to high worlds to populated cities to war worlds to death worlds etc 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 etc. The list is potentially endless. And maybe the demand for agricultural produce is simply so vast that there is no way of satisfying it. Even if you take the entire planet, you have the entire population move across it continuously to follow the growing seasons, to follow the weather and the, the warmth and the times of year in which certain regions are particularly rich. Even if you squeeze every last percentage point of growth out of the world, it just isn't enough. What do you do then? Well, you turn to more unnatural means. Now, of course, already the main means of agricultural production in most agri-worlds are already mechanized and or even automated to some extent. There's not a bunch of imperial civilians skipping through the bushes picking berries by hand or anything. Although, actually, that, that is a thing on some planets. Some of the more feudalistic worlds, for example, still rely almost exclusively on good old-fashioned manpower and muscle to get their harvest in. But on the proper massive agri-worlds, at the very least you're going to be seeing things like tractors and harvesters and combines, etc. You know, because why the hell not? On some of the even bigger, more effective administratum worlds, you might even be seeing stuff like combine harvesters the size of jumbo jets, just scything down hundreds of meters worth of produce every second. But you're still relying on the more or less natural growth process. Obviously it's going to be enhanced with fertilizer and various chemicals, much like we do today. But there is one step further here. Oh, yes there is. Now there's actually a couple of further steps. One is, for example, agriculture without using soil. Hydroponic agriculture, something that we are beginning to experiment today. It is far from inconceivable that the Imperium might have enormous indoor farms with level upon level upon level upon level of agroponics reaching up into skyscrapers of mass agricultural produce, maybe even enormous warehouses covered every square inch with little dainty growing salads. This kind of more technologically intense agriculture is of course going to require a lot more of, well, that technology, the understanding of it and the manipulation of it. The Mechanicus as well, by the way, do have their very own agri-worlds. They're much rarer than the Administratum taking personal command, but they do exist and they do happen. A Mechanicus forge world is of course going to be very, very, very different from a forge world. I said Forge World. Agri World! There you go. A Mechanicus Agri World is of course going to be very, very different. It might be, um, say for example, instead of open fields, it might be hydroponics, but imagine enormous rice paddies, basically. An entire planet covered in knee-high water, serviced by thousands, millions probably, of servitors just walking up and down around the entire planet. Picking one way, sowing the other way, and so on and so on, in a continuous, never-ending cycle of produce. Other planets might even be terraformed specifically for the purpose of agriculture. As you mentioned earlier, this would be a ludicrous expenditure of resources, mind you, as there are areas that simply are not well suited for agricultural produce. You might have literal mountains that you not only need to level, but then cover in dirt on top of that again. It would be a a hilariously huge task, but theoretically, you could produce a literal agri-world, cut by millions upon millions of little streams of water, or artificial irrigation tunnels and networks covering the entire planet. Surrounding it is growing beds as far as the eye can see. Every square meter is covered in some form of vegetation. Hell, maybe even the, um, the populace live on stilted cities, elevated above the agricultural areas, maybe. 
Perhaps these areas are serviced by indentured slave populations, perhaps by servitors, perhaps by fully automated machinery, perhaps there's literally just rails covering the entire planet with servitors hanging from them, picking the, the cotton or whatever hell they're producing there, the beans, the corn, the potatoes, whatever, and depositing it into enormous hoppers, which then transport it over to central processing plants, eventually shipping it up into all bit. This is possible. Or you can even create agri-worlds on very hostile environments. You can put down huge agricultural domes, inside of which you could create a tolerable atmosphere for the best case production of plants. Say for example you've got um, some form of bullshit science fiction plant that can just live in vacuum. It doesn't mind, you know, it doesn't need air, it just needs sun. Perhaps you can even manufacture it so that it's capable of absorbing far more solar radiation. Perhaps you would then be, uh, Oh, I'll be interested in creating essentially a high radiation solarium style of thing. You could even perhaps have Imagine an agricultural world on domes very close to a sun because of the unique properties of the agricultural produce. It absorbs the radiation, it grows ridiculously quick. Bear you in mind, I'm making shit right up here, pulling it straight from my cavernous anus, but this is science fiction. It is the far future. It wouldn't surprise me if the uh, Mygos biologist could figure out a way to make plants thrive in very specific circumstances circumstances, perhaps even producing superior produce by doing so. Say you can have a, a type of cotton, for example, that thrives at sub-zero temperatures and somehow is way tougher than regular cotton, to the point that now you're basically growing Kevlar, for example. That could happen as well. And whilst we're on the topic of uh, very experimental <laughs> farms, a lot of agri-worlds are genuinely pretty decent places to live. Not very heavily urbanized, primarily fields or untamed countryside with relatively few city, with the populations dealing with their local area. A farmer might have uh, however many square miles of acreage of farmland that he can deal with using his machinery and a small staff, perhaps even families in a feudal system. Many of these worlds can be relatively idyllic, whilst others can be just as enormous a hellhole as any other planet in the Imperium. Imagine working on one of those plans for the Mechanicus covered in nothing but hydroponics complexes, for example. How different would your life really be to that of a high world drone? You get up in the morning, you check the water composition for the plants, then you walk down literally endless rows of little salads being grown in hydroponic ponds everywhere, or um, enormous algae ponds, where your only real job is to check a readout, you know, write it down, move on to the next readout, write that down, and so the entire day goes, without even ever seeing the sun. Oh, well. <laughs> You'll see a lot of light bulbs, but no actual sun. Or you could even be on planets that produce uh, more specific crops, shall we say. Perhaps there is a extremely poisonous plant with a handy dandy protection system that spews poisonous spores into the atmosphere whenever you touch it, but it produces something super useful. Maybe something uh, retardedly tasty, or a special kind of fabric, or a special form of oil from its seeds, or whatever, which makes it very, very valuable. Working on one of these plants would undoubtedly suck quite a lot. There is also the fact that a lot of these agricultural workers are probably really, really expendable. On some planets where you have to deal with the climate, local conditions, the growing nature of the soil, etc., local experience can be invaluable. But on a mass production world where the closest you have to a field is an algae pond, well, any old retard can write down numbers and skim some greenery off the top. Well, servitors could probably replace you overnight, and nobody would miss you if you would happen to fall in the ponds and be eaten by the piranhas who live there. I don't know why there's piranhas there, but it made sense at the time. Alternatively, you also have another form of ugly world as well, which could either be rather idyllic or absolutely horrible as well. And that is the fact, of course, that you don't just have you know, potatoes and corn and grain and rice and all of that nonsense. No, 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 no. You also have 
animals. Oh yes, I made an entire video talking about the humble Grox, because frankly, <laughs> I kind of like the Grox. It's one of those little touches in 40k which adds to the world, you know? Like, oh, what do they eat? Well, um, pfft, hamburgers? Well, that's not very scientific -y, or science fiction-y more correctly. So let's invent a retarded lizard creature that people lobotomize and occasionally mount laser guns in its head to scare off poachers. <laughs> That's just fantastic, but livestock worlds. Now, there might even be cases of entire agricultural worlds producing, you know, agricultural products that produce nothing but non-human edible substances, animal food basically, which is shipped out to these worlds to be turned again into you know, more higher refinement products. Most will probably have a combination, but I can imagine an entire planet just filled with grox corals or an ocean world, for example, where you just have nothing but enormous fishing fleets trawling the ocean continuously, or huge artificial ponds filled with fish that are being raised and then, you know, drain the water, pick the fish, and so it goes around and around again, etc. On these worlds, well, imagine being on a boat for your entire existence. Like, it's, it's the deadliest catch except that is your entire life. You're just fishing crab every day for eternity. <laughs> that, that would be a pretty shitty job, I think. I, I really do. On the other flip side, you could be a, um, a nomadic herdsman on some vast plains planet, following herds of grox or whatever meat-producing animals waffle around. It's nice and peaceful, you know, you're riding around on your domesticated variant of the local meat beast as you hunt them down, you track them, protect them against some local predators, kind of like a Wild West style. Or maybe you're just a worker at the meat packaging plant as the entire planet is one enormous grox coral. That could happen as well. The 41st millennium does tend to be a setting of extremes after all. And it's far from uncommon for the populace of these planets to be completely absorbed in their work. Again, there might be occasions of worlds that aren't proper agri-worlds, but have a lot of agricultural produce, or that you know, cut down trees or lumber, or harvest local critters for food, you know, for fish, uh, animals, blah 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 blah. But on an actual agri-world, but that is the primary produce, it is the primary export, and it is the primary focus of civilization on that planet, it would infuse everything about your life. They would be cultures built around the the main crops. You'd probably have festivities based around the harvesting seasons. I would imagine that many of these worlds would have their own local interpretations of the imperial uh, religion, for example, where the emperor is a mighty corn cob producing limitless corn for his grateful populace, or have saints uh, focus around agricultural produce. Maybe they will have um, deified the uh, biologist Magus who invented a particular strain of grain, for example. They might have churches dedicated to this, entire priesthoods focused around it. The priests themselves might have their own symbols, like a scythe, for example, or a little golden combine harvester. <laughs> I do love the idea of a bunch of faithful just kneeling down to a ancient John Deere plaque. <laughs> like, ah, uh, our lord and saviour John Deere, bring us this year our yearly bounty or whatever. It could happen, it could happen. But I'll wrap it up there, and hopefully now you'll have a bit of a better understanding of what agri-worlds are. They're not just cornfields, no, not by any stretch of the imagination. They can be as incredibly diverse as almost any other type of world in the Imperium, hell. If there is a wide variety of cemetery worlds, you'd better believe there's a tremendous variety of agricultural worlds. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.